All right, so Bernie Sanders might be making his announcement that he's going to be running for president, and people are flipping out, aren't they? Uh, There's a lot of, of course, there's a lot of cheers. I think a lot of us progressives kind of had pretty strong suspicions that he would throw his hat back in the ring. I mean, I know that his age is a concern because he's definitely getting up there, but that guy is spry. I mean, he doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. So, um, I mean, hey, listen, you know, if Ruth Bader Ginsburg can keep at it, then I think Bernie Sanders can as well. Uh, others, though, you know, they're being pretty bigoted, actually. <laughs> for for the party that's not supposed to be the party of bigotry, I mean, they're being quite bigoted when it comes to Bernie Sanders. They're like, he's too old. Okay, ageism. Or, oh, the party doesn't want another white guy. Didn't they learn anything from the midterm elections that people are looking for change? So we're saying now that the change we're looking for is just like a color of skin, gender, and age. That that's the change that we're looking for. Completely missing what the progressive movement is about. I mean, blinded to what it's all about. They really just thought that people, I mean, genuinely, people think that people voted for Bernie Sanders and followed Bernie Sanders because they were misogynists who didn't want to support Hillary Clinton. I mean, that's what they actually think. They do not understand They don't understand it at all. They don't understand that progressives no longer wanted a centrist who is going to march us into more war and uh, and vote alongside Wall Street every single time and be bought out by corporate interests, like completely blinded by this, just said, no, it's misogyny, it's misogyny. And look, they just want another old white guy. And that's that's what it is. I mean, just blind. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot of pushback here saying, no, no, we don't want this white old guy, you know, a bunch of bigotry going on, which is absurd. And then I've noticed a lot of people pushing back. And this is what I really want to talk about in this video. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people criticizing a lot of things about Bernie Sanders. But in particular, I want to talk about the pushback against his money. So Bernie Sanders is not a wealthy guy. I mean, we're not talking. We're not talking millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, which some members of Congress and some senators have. You know, there are some who are extremely wealthy in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And there are people that even have 60, 70, 80 million dollars and 20 million dollars. And Bernie Sanders doesn't have that level of money. But the big thing that people kind of say is they push back on him for for his policies of being for the people, and I'm not talking about Kamala Harris's slogan, (laughs) Uh, Bernie Sanders truly being a fighter for the people, truly being a person who wants real, really to rebuild the middle class and bring the American dream back to people. Um, They seem to think that that sentiment doesn't fall in line with having money or making money. And they want to push at him and say, oh, really? Yeah, here's this guy. And look at him. He's buying his fourth house. What a hypocrite. Okay. Having the idea of Medicare for all, universal education, Green New Deal, getting money out of politics, the big one, getting money out of politics. None of those are against making money. We want you to make a lot of money, a lot of money. I want you to be able to buy five, six homes and 40 cars and go on every single luxury vacation your mind could imagine. I want you to buy all the fancy clothes in the world. And I want you to eat at all the fancy restaurants. I don't want you to not do those things or not have those things. I want you to have those things. And I hope you have those things. I hope you get those things. Because for one, when you do that, when you make all that money and you start spending it, you are putting it back into the economy. And that is great. You're going to go out there and you're going to live a life of luxury. You're going to buy 40 cars. You're going to put them in your fancy garages from all the fancy homes you build. You're going to be doing all of that. And no one is telling you you can't have that. These policies, these progressive policies are not against you having a ton of money. And I mean a shit ton of money. You can get all the money. I want to be rich, too. I mean, look, I want to be rich. I want millions of dollars. But I also want Medicare for all. I also want universal education. I also want, uh, you know, a Green New Deal and money out of politics. I want all of those things. And guess what? You can have both. I know it's mind blowing. What? You can have both. (laughs) The, The question is, after you have bought all the homes you could buy, 
and after you've bought all the cars you could drive, and after you've bought all the fancy clothes you could wear, and you've eaten all the steaks you can eat, what do you do with the rest of the money? The rest of the money that you can't possibly spend. You've already bought your yachts, you've already bought your boats and your cars, and you've already bought, you know, you've already paid for everything you possibly can. What do you do with all the rest of the money? You know what rich people do? They sit on it. And they don't dump it back into the economy. Maybe they donate a little. You know, maybe they start a little venture and they put some money into that. But largely, they sit on their money. Now, if you're going to do those things, like put your money into charity or dump your money into a business, great, great. Guess what? That's not part of the taxation plan that progressives are talking about. That would be something that's considered before the taxation kicks in. The question is, what are you going to do with all that extra money that you literally cannot spend? I mean, it's just more money than you could ever spend. No one is talking about taking away your riches or making it to where you can't have the American dream and live the life of a rock star. No one is saying you can't have those things. And I'm not certainly saying that Bernie Sanders can't have those things. If Bernie has written a book or he's had some wise investments or I don't know what his spouse does. I mean, I don't know any of that stuff. But if that guy has some money, good for him. That's not against the progressive policies. And that is what so many of these people who are not understanding progressive, the progressive movement, they're just thinking, oh, this is socialism and you want us to all live in squalor and you want us to just share everything. So I work hard and I can't have these nice things and you're going to take it all from me. And that is not what it is. You can have all the nice things you want. No one wants to take these things from you. I mean, God, I was just having this conversation earlier today. We just want what the rest of the world has that is nice, the, West of, the rest of the Western world. You look at the Scandinavian nations, you look at many of the European nations, and they've all, you know, you look at Germany. I mean, Germany provides all of these things for their population. Scandinavia does too. And these people were sitting there saying, oh my gosh, you're going to just like socialism. And, uh, you know, we can't, don't you understand that capitalism is key? And I'm like, Okay, you know what? How about this? I don't want you to ever shop at an Ikea, and I don't want you to ever buy a German-made car. You can just give up your BMW, your Porsche, your Mercedes, your Volkswagen, your Audi. I want you to just give all that up. Don't buy a German-made anything ever again. And uh, don't shop at Ikea. I dare you. Because, you know, if you do, oh my gosh, you're supporting this, like, big, bad, what you think is socialism. <gasps> oh, my gosh. You know, you're just, uh, you're supporting the, the, the devil, when you buy these products from these people who live in these countries who offer their population these social services that we're talking about in the progressive movement. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. And you know, then they push back and they say, oh, but, but those countries aren't socialists. Well, that's we're not socialists either. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about social programs. <laughs> so this pushback on Bernie potentially having a bunch of money is just... I mean, part of me, you know, part of me thinks, gosh, how stupid, you know, how stupid can you possibly be? But then then the other part of me says, well, clearly we just haven't been explaining this well enough. I mean, maybe that's it. You know, maybe we're just not getting the message out there. Maybe we're really, I mean, maybe we're just failing at the explanation and that's why they don't understand. So, but at the end of the day, I just want to reiterate to those of you who don't understand the progressive movement and the uh, Medicare for all, universal education, uh, good programs for when you're very young, you know, nursery, all the way through elderly care. Other countries have these things, Co countries that have capitalist economies that are regulated, that are fair. They still have these nice products that they're still producing highest level stuff in fact and they're still able to provide these social programs for their people no one is stopping the founders of ikea from getting really filthy stinking rich and believe me they are and guess what with this progressive movement you can be rich too <laughs> 